All right. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, my name is Xiaopong. I'm going to share some lessons learned from uh, us at Imeta, uh, implementing more than 40 plus machine learning projects during the past four to five years. Um, so there we go. Uh, who is this guy? I, uh, you might wonder. So I'll just say a few words about that. Uh, I'm working as an AI advisor at Imeta. And what is an AI advisor? Think about management consultant, but less bullshit and uh, more mathematics. So that's basically the definition of myself, at least. And then also, I'm very passionate about building tech communities. So you might have seen me before in one of the meetup groups. So uh, Outsloo AI uh, meetup, I'm one of the organizers. The same goes for Outsloo Machine Learning and Outsloo uh, IoT. So if you haven't joined any of those meetups, I encourage you to search them on Google, and you can easily find them on meetup.com or their own website and be part of the community. And we need your contribution. All right, so why am I here? I wonder. So you might have the same question. Um, AI, and, AI and machine learning has been so hyped, like way too hyped. If you look at the, the Gartner hype curve, where are I at the top? So in 2018, uh, the report published by Gartner, they have placed different emerging technologies on this curve. And deep learning is right on the top. What's going to happen next? This is, a, this is like a roller coaster ride. You're building up, climbing on the top. The next step is going to fall. So there will be a falling of actually uh, the gap between the expectation and the actual implementation. And there has been so much hi uh, hype, buzz, and crap going on. So I just want to have my you know, minimal contribution to the community to cut some crap. So that's why I'm here. Um, just one example showing you the hype of AI right now. So only in Europe, the top 13 economies, there are more than 2,800 startups beginning of this year. And now it's probably 3,000 or even more. Um, as you can see, uh, UK has the, the most startups right now focusing on AI. And even in Norway, being the, the smallest within the 30 largest economy in Europe, we have more than 30 startups focusing on AI. So this gives you a, a hint on how much hype and also investment and capital is going into AI and machine learning right now as we speak. But more interestingly, there are many companies who claim to be doing machine learning or AI, and they're not doing AI at all. According to a UK-based research firm, and also venture, venture capital, MMC Ventures, uh, they have investigated uh, into, I think, around 4,000 4, uh, startups which claim to be working with AI and machine learning across Europe. And they have found out more than 40% of them are not doing anything AI at all. This is kind of sarcastic. I mean, basically, this is like the, the trend we, we have seen with blockchain. When you, put your when, when you put blockchain as a keyword, in your, uh, in your startup name or in your investor deck. You, you have much higher chance of getting money. This is kind of sick, because what we want to see is real implementation, not this type of hype. So what am I going to talk about? Rest assured, there will no, um, be no buzzwords or, or you know, futurism or killer robots or disrupt uh, exponential disruption whatsoever. I hate those words. I, I really find it difficult to pronounce in them. Uh, I share you. Uh, so I will share some hands-on learnings from our implementation at Imeta together with clients and also uh, our partners. So just a little bit of background. We have, as I mentioned, we have done more than 40 plus machine learning projects in the past five years. And in Imeta, we have 20 plus uh, data scientists, data engineers, and AI advisors. I think this is one of the largest uh, data science uh, competency pool in, uh, in Norway right now. And also, um, everything we have learned, I have summarized them into five lessons that I want to share with you today in the next five minutes. <laughs> no pressure. So, just to give you an impression on the different uh, industries we have been working with within those 40 uh, machine learning projects, you can see a lot of from maritime, healthcare, retail, etc. Um, so this is how we work with machine learning projects at Imeta. So we normally work with six steps, starting with uh, defining the problem, 
defining clear business objectives, and also conceptualize a solution. And then that's the data preparation. You need to exploratively uh, analyze the data and, and then also transform the, transform the data to the ideal uh, format that you want to train your model on. And then it's about constructing the model and training the model before going into evaluation of the model, both from technical point of view and also business point of view. Uh, next step, putting the model into production and integrating the model into your business process. That's what we call operationalization. And last but not least, continuously optimizing the model. If you work with AI and machine learning, then this is very familiar to you. This is no rocket science. But this gives you the basis for my uh, lessons learned later on. That's why I'm mentioning them right now. All right, so first lesson. Uh, also, just to explain how did I come with those conclusions. I have conducted an internal survey to the whole department, everyone who have been part of the, the four-year journey working with 40-plus machine learning projects. So the conclusions I'm sharing with you are from our point of view. So you might be biased due to the type of project we work with, but it's from first-hand experience. It's not from um, external research company, not Gartner or not Microsoft. Um, first lesson, data preparation takes more time than any single step in the machine learning process. I think this is not something uh, surprising for you, but this is good for you to know because next time when you plan for a machine learning project, making sure you plan enough time for this step. And I can easily tell you that our data scientists actually spend more time crunching the data, preparing the data, than actually building model and training the model. Uh, this might be a little bit frustrating for some data scientists, but this is the fact that we need to admit and we need to uh, have this into consideration when planning and executing for a machine learning project. So this is the first learning. Second, from a technical point of view, what are the most challenging steps in the six steps we talked about? So data exploration and transformation, as I mentioned, this will be an explorative um, process and you need not only data science, um, you know, technical skills, but also visualization, also domain knowledge to understand what data set you are dealing with and transforming the data set to actually to be suitable and relevant for the business objective that you have defined to solve that. Also, putting models in production is surprisingly challenging, challenging compared to actually um, building and training the model. So this is also good to be take into, taken into consideration when you are planning and executing your next machine learning project. Also good to mention is that actually many of the machine learning projects you might have seen or have heard about stop here. They don't really go into production. That's also very frustrating because many companies don't have the resource or uh, ambition to move things into production. But only when you move things into production, that's when you start to realize the value from machine learning on a daily basis in your business process. So that's my comment. So next, ensuring clearly defined business objectives is the single most important success factor in a machine learning project. I've seen some projects also within Inmeta when we started four years ago where we skip this step and go straight into working with the data and also building model and, and training the model, etc. And then oftentimes, we need to go back and actually clarify what are we trying to do? What are we trying to solve? Who is our target user? And, and what pain points are we addressing? And how we are improving the current business process using machine learning and AI? Or actually, there are simpler solutions that we can use, uh, statistical models, etc. not machine learning at all. So this needs to be defined up front so that you know you are solving the right problem which will create business impact and value. And also machine learning is actually suitable for solving this problem. So if you remember only one thing from today's presentation, this will be that. Clearly defined business objective will be the single most important factor for success in machine learning project. So since we have been working with so many different organizations across different industries, we have also learned a little bit perspectives that is broader than just a machine learning project. So basically, the challenges and also struggles organizations might face when they uh, embrace AI in general. 
So one thing we have learned is those five are the most common challenges that organizations are struggling with uh, when they implement machine learning. Uh, we al already talked about this part. You need a clear objective in order to succeed. And data. AI machine learning is all about data. Without data, you will not be able to create a value. I mean, <laughs> people say, you know, junk in, junk out uh, when you train a model. So uh, making sure you not only have the volume of the data you need, but also the quality of the data you need. And here also comes in the perspective of AI ethics and responsibility, because uh, to a very large extent, when you have biased the results of your machine learning solution, it's normally introduced from the data set that you're using. So, that, so it's good to keep in mind when we talk about the quality of the data, not only from a technical point of view, but also from an ethical point of view. Uh, and also, as I mentioned already, the inability to move things into production really prevent a lot of organization of organizations from realizing value of AI and machine learning. So next time when you're involved in a machine learning project in your company or in your client's organization, making sure to convince them to move things into production. And this is when you start to reap the benefits of machine learning for real. Uh, last but not the least, many companies and organization, organizations treat AI as experiment, experiments only. And that means they don't have real commitments of implementing this or scaling this across the organization. They just want to you know, have one or two data scientists play with some machine learning magic and maybe sprinkle a little bit of machine learning on our existing business, that doesn't work. Uh, you really have to, you know, uh, making sure you're committed to uh, conducting this machine learning project into production and also measure your results. Uh, maybe not the same way as you measure software development, but still you need to define success criteria and then you will have the, the commitment from the management to actually sustain your AI efforts going forward. So defining clear success criteria and convincing your business stakeholder will be a very important step uh, within machine learning implementation process. The last lesson we have learned uh, working very broadly with different companies of course, industries is that uh, the key reason for many organizations to struggle with implementing or adopting AI machine learning in general is a lack of overall data and AI strategy. This is important for you to know as well because your manager might be on the business side or your stakeholders might, might be on the business side. They might see machine learning AI as a, only as a tool, but not as an element in their business strategy. And that's kind of risky because then they are not taking this into consideration um, from its impact or from its uh, implications, and both from business and technical point of view. So making sure you have data and AI as one key element in your digitalization program or in your corporate strategy is crucial for you to succeed as an organization when you embrace AI and machine learning. So here I just want to quickly show you um, this model actually published by Microsoft together with uh, PwC. Um, they have identified the key gaps in uh, um, AI and machine learning related competency across Europe. And as you can see, advanced analytics when it comes to data science, data engineering, that's one gap. AI leadership, that's another. Uh, data management, that means your governance process and infrastructure around data and, and AI and machine learning. So I'm showing this because when you have a data and AI strategy in place, and that means you will have all those elements covered, then you have bat much better chance in mitigating the gaps in your organization and your future state and actually start to realize value of machine learning and AI in your organization. If you forget to take photos, here's a summary, just for your information. So now is the time for you to capture it if you want to. That's the five lessons I want to share with you today. And if you want to get in touch, we can talk later. Thanks.